Hey everybody, Aaron from Fleetistics, and today we're going to have a very casual conversation about something that most people would probably think is relatively mundane, but I'm here to tell you that there are important considerations when looking at this type of technology. And what we're going to talk about today is the uh, Go 9 device from Geotab. And you can see uh, from the outside, it looks like very much like every other OBD device that simply plugs into the OBD port. But there are a lot of technical features that go along with this device that you should really be aware of. And when you're out there shopping, uh, you know, the equipment that you get has a lot to do with your near term, but also long term success and return on investment. And, uh, you know, the Geotab device has been in development in some form or fashion for over 20 years. Right. Uh, and that's when we started with Geotab was 20 years ago. Uh, actually 21 years ago now. So we're actually the oldest reseller of Geotab in the United States, actually in the world. So um, this device used to be about yay big. It was a big uh, clamshell and it, it uh, uh, was a passive unit and did a wireless download or download through a key dongle, things like that. And it has evolved into a state-of-the-art device that you see here. And uh, this state-of-the-art device has a huge number of features and functions that you're just not going to find on other GPS devices. And we sell other GPS devices, right? Uh, the interesting part is that this device is priced as well as, um, you know, devices that have half the features. And, um, you know, a lot of those features tie into functionality online. So, you know, with the Geotab platform, you're getting significantly more functionality because the data that you're collecting from the uh, entry point is that much better. So I'm gonna run you through some details here. Some of it's gonna be a little bit boring. Some of it you're gonna be like, yeah, who cares? But you know, I wanna share it with you anyway because uh, there may be something in here that uh, kind of you know rings important to you when I go through this stuff. And then for those guys out there that are technical, you'll kind of hear this and you'll be like, oh, I, I get why you know I really wanna start my company with this device because I have options two, three, five years down the road, uh, even 10 years down the road with the technology like this. So uh, just a little bit about the internals of it. It's got a 32-bit processor. It actually has four times the amount of memory than the Go 8 device, so a big upgrade. It's got five times the amount of RAM. It actually runs a Linux operating system. If you think about what that means, it's like running uh, Windows or something, right? You can do a tremendous amount of uh, really neat stuff in, when you manage an operating system versus just some typical, you know, um, hardware firmware, right? So uh, the future of an uh, operating system like that uh, really has a, a, almost an unlimited number of opportunities for growth. Um, so state-of-the-art GPS technology, and I'll talk more about that later. It's got a G-Force uh, monitoring uh, capability. It has an IOX expansion uh, system, let's call it. And you'll see right here on the side of the device, let me pull that up close for you. You can see a port right there. And you can connect various things to that depending on what you want to do. Because not everybody's going to want to do the same thing. You may not even want to do anything with it today. But at some point in the future, you may decide, hey, look, I really want an external buzzer in my vehicle to um, communicate a very specific uh, message to somebody who may have done something that you don't want. You could even actually, uh, you know, use it for positive reinforcement. You know, there are all kinds of custom stuff that you can do when you get a hold of the data. Uh, uh, the other thing is that you can get engine and battery health. Um, it communicates on the LTE network. You can get odometer. You can get VIN information. Uh, odometer and VIN are sometimes the most difficult things for fleet managers to get. You know, who wants to get on the phone and start calling 20 people? Hey, what's your odometer say? Hey, what's your odometer say? Or, you know, hey, what's the VIN on that vehicle? That stuff's old school. You know, now you just basically go on, go on to our, our website and just look it up and there it is. Uh, there are three different LTE carriers. You know, all the big ones, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile slash Sprint. So uh, if one works better in your area, you can get the device that's going to uh, give you the best real-time performance in that area. And then... Obviously, you know, with an OBD form factor, anybody can plug this into the OBD port. Most people don't just leave it in the OBD port. You can put a, a zip tie around it to help hold it in place and keep it from getting knocked loose. Uh, but the other interesting thing is that this device has a whole family of harnesses. 
and you can get what's called a universal Y harness kit. And that allows you to uh, plug the harness into the OBD port. Actually, you back out the OBD plug from the port. You plug the Y harness into that. Uh, and then you take one of the Y legs and you replace the OBD port in the vehicle so it stays open to the mechanics. And then you would take this and plug this into the other leg of that Y harness and then secure it in the vehicle. And, uh, you know, there are different types of OBD connectors and, and shapes and things like that. Well, the universal kit gives you about 10 different pieces of plastic that you can use to make sure that you get the right uh, fitting for the job. And you can also use the same device on heavy equipment. Uh, you can get special harnesses that might be six or nine pin or a Caterpillar harness, things like that. So you can uh, use this one single device on all of these different uh, assets that you have, really making it the most versatile. And if all of that doesn't work, you can get a three-wire harness and you can just hardwire it straight in like an old-school GPS device. So um, you can always fall back to uh, you know old-school three-wire install. Uh, with this device, it's, it's, it's the beginning of ELD and DVIR, which is used for IFTA and FMCSA compliance. Um, it has the large memory, like I told you, which will hold about 80,000 logs. Uh, it used to be 30,000, but now it's 80,000 log points. And if you think about how many logs are generated in a day, you can go a long, long time, not just days, but think about how many hours you drive in a day and how many hours of driving that actually represents. Uh, inside of this little device, there is the accelerometer and the uh, G4 sensor, you know, that um, actually records information at uh, second by second for 100 minutes. So if you were to have an accident, it's actually faster than one, once per second, but um, for easy math, you know, if you were to have an accident, you can download uh, that 100 uh, minutes of second by second information, and then you can see what the vehicle is doing. And my daughter actually got into an accident and I was able to call support and say, hey, look at the accelerometer and try to tell me what happened before I even got to the accident scene. When I showed up, I looked at the vehicles and it, it was exactly what happened. Um, you know, she had to hard brake to avoid from hitting the person in front, which we could see the hard brake. She got rear-ended, uh, so there was a jolt forward, and then she smashed into the vehicle in front of her, so she got it on both ends, and the accelerometer information showed that. We've had other uh, customers that have rollovers, and you can see some of that information in there. You know, I, I, to be honest and, and transparent, it's not perfect. You know, accelerometer is one of those uh, things where you get false positives. How do you tell a pothole from you know other types of movement? And that's a very big engineering project that Geotab uh, continues to refine and is getting better and better all the time. Um, so the uh, the driver coaching, which I alluded to, there's two things uh, really with driver coaching um, and one is that the device will beep and those beeps can be set up to beep at the driver when certain behaviors take place so they very quickly learn when something is noted about how they drive because they get the instant feedback and then they can work on changing that behavior like hey let's not slam on our brakes or let's not swerve around these corners or let's not hit speed bumps doing 35 so that instant feedback is great. You can also use the IOX port to actually add a speaker to that. So you can, you can bring the speaker up if the device is in the dashboard and that allows it to uh, more clearly communicate to the driver what's going on. Um, you know, other IOX things include driver identification, uh, you know, auxiliary inputs, um, keyless entry stuff. I mean, the list is actually quite long of the things that you can do with this. So um, it's, a, it's a way of expanding and getting more for your uh, investment because you're able to collect more data and make more decisions because you have more flexibility in how you configure it. That's a big difference when you look at it, just a, an OBD device that plugs in and you can't do anything else with it. So we talked about uh, accident detection and notification, uh, expandability, uh, and you can do up to four IOX inputs. Um, so you can daisy chain those inputs together. The first one connects to the second one. The first, each IOX has a port on it that you can connect one more thing to it until you get out to four. Um, you can also get a serial port cable in case you have that type of uh, communication requirement. And you get near real-time data. And I'm not going to get too far into this particular piece of it, but the reality is that uh, you know it uses changes in speed and direction to determine how much detail is necessary to give the user 
a, a high resolution understanding of the trip that's made throughout the course of the day. And uh, when we first started in this industry over 20 years ago, the vehicles would update once every five minutes. You would have a lot of straight line cuts going across corners and things like that. Now, especially with the Geotab's patented smart algorithm, uh, they can get the data consumption down very low and they give you a very high resolution track that you can look at and really understand what was going on out there. Uh, it really is the best track in the industry from what I have seen. Uh, there is a 72 GPS channel receiver, which gives 2.5 meter accuracy, which ties into, you know, not only um, the way the information is is uh, recorded or logged, but also, you know, what's the accuracy on the ground. Uh, in the old days, we used to have to put an antenna on the roof, right? And now, if you think about, you take your cell phone, you walk around your house, and you can actually see what part of the house you're in. GPS antennas have gotten that that much better. And we can talk about 72 channels and being able to uh, read from the Glassnose, um, you know, satellite constellation and the different ones around the world. That's a big deal because if you're operating in Europe or Asia or wherever, you know, there may be different opportunities for uh, GPS technology that this one device is going to work well for. Uh, it does get a very fast GPS acquisition. So uh, it used to be in the old days when you would start up and you would drive. The acquisition wouldn't take place until, you know, maybe a minute or two from your origination point, so you would get that initial jump. Uh, it still happens periodically, but not nearly like it used to in the old days. Um, one of the biggest things that's come about with these things is connected vehicle cybersecurity. Not only is the device uh, secure from hacking um, as much as it can because nothing's foolproof, but, you know, there's uh, built-in um, encryption and cybersecurity from the beginning of the data collection process all the way through data storage in the cloud. And that's in transit and at rest. So uh, Geotab has met the federal government standard for uh, data security. And uh, because of that, you know, everybody below the federal government, as far as like cybersecurity requirements, is going to get the benefit of that. Uh, this device will plug into 12 or 24 volt circuits and it is self-calibrating the accelerometer and gyroscope. So a vehicle, uh, like a big truck, is going to have a different accelerometer profile than a small vehicle. So instead of trying to pick and choose, you know, hey, how's this vehicle act? Well, maybe that vehicle has, uh, you know, harder tires, heavier suspension. Uh, maybe it's typically loaded uh, with gravel versus, you know, the, uh, you know, the pickup truck or car. All of those things are being auto calibrated versus you know the, the old way of doing things or on lesser devices where you have to establish a you have to apply a setting to it and hope that it's the right setting and go forward. So um, let's see, we talked about encryption and things of that nature. I'll tell you from you know doing a lot of these installs myself over the years, it doesn't get any easier. Most of our customers will do their own installs these days because if you have anybody that has any electronics aptitude, uh, the install is relatively easy. Uh, but there are certainly times when it makes more sense to get the pros to come in. And, uh, you know, is it easy uh, for them? Yeah, because they do hundreds, if not thousands of these things all the time. Uh, but the biggest benefit to you and your business is they do it after hours. So you don't have to interrupt daily operations to get installations done. Uh, the plus side is, you know, if they come in, you know, maybe they do the bulk work and then you still learn how to do the troubleshooting because these are electronic devices. Um, you know, so if there's a problem after the fact, you can go out and, or somebody can go out and, and, you know, really troubleshooting as you take it from one vehicle, you put it into another vehicle that you know was working, you drive it around the block. If you get nothing, then send it back and we do RMAs. Uh, Fleetistics offers a 10 year limited lifetime warranty. Uh, with any service plan. And if you go with the Pro Plus plan from Geotab, you will actually get a, uh, a limited lifetime warranty from Geotab. Two of the best warranties in the industry, bar none. Now, if we've actually got a GPS unit back one time. It had Coca-Cola in it. That's not covered. But if it fails, you know, just because of, uh, you know, wears out over time, then you know that type of thing is going to be covered virtually for a lifetime. I mean, how many of these electronic devices are going to last 10 years and how many are going to go for a lifetime? 
actually, you know, you'd be kind of surprised. We have some customers that if it wasn't for the 3G to 4G type migrations, they'd still be running stuff that was 10 years old. And, uh, you know, that stuff, the FCC, you know, negotiates with the carriers. It has nothing to do with Geotab or us. We're just kind of, and, and, or you, and we're all just kind of the victims of the, the technology upgrades that are out there. But by getting on Pro Plus, Geotab will give you a free device, um, you know, when the next upgrade comes. Now, we're just getting through 3G to 4G, so it's going to be a long time before 5, you know, 4G to 5G or 4G to 25G, who knows what. You know, uh, it's going to be years and years before that takes place because it's expensive for everybody. Think about every modem for every home alarm system, every security camera system with what remote access, every GPS tracker, all these IoT devices all fall victim to these major upgrades. So um, it's a big, big deal and costs billions of dollars when, um, you know, uh, the FCC says, yeah, go ahead. You know, easy for them to say, but very difficult for you and I to, you know, to work through that process. Um, you know, if you are interested in the Geotab platform, you know, give Fleet Statistics a call. We've been doing this for over 21 years. We've got very senior staff. Uh, we're not a huge company, uh, but what we are is really good at customer service, and you can talk to the same people over and over again, and that's a big deal. And uh, you know, I know from a customer service perspective, I want to talk to people. I want to get to know people. It helps us know your business and the things that you're trying to accomplish. And really what we can do is ask you questions that you may not be thinking about, and we can help you see things that, you know, hey, maybe in six months I want to add an IOX to this device so I can start to use driver identification or you know I want to add a speaker because I have a an insurance problem where my I might get dropped from my insurance because I've got these risky behaviors and accidents that are taking place so we can help you uh, put the pieces of the puzzle together and this is the foundation of that so give us a call at Fleetistics um, you know we're here for you and I uh, hope you enjoyed this it's been a little bit long but you really need to look at the technology that you're looking at implementing because you are making an investment that is not easily undone, either because you're investing money or because you're investing time through the installation process. Thank you and look forward to talking to you and hopefully partnering with you in the near future. Have a great day.